Ever since I was a kid, I've always loved film and TV. The stories, the soundtracks, the performances, the scenery, every single thing about it. But there's something in particular that has always caught my eye, and that's what the characters are wearing. I'm Iman Kellum, I'm an actor, film nerd, and content creator, and I'm here to share some of the most iconic looks from a handful of iconic black films currently streaming on Prime Video. Guava Island is a recent film that I really love that stars Donald Glover and Rihanna. The costumes take inspiration from different parts of the African diaspora, but also injects it with some Caribbean influence. Although set on a fictional island, the bright and tropical costumes complement the Cuban filming location. Donald Glover's tribal print shirt is a personal highlight. Its patterns and colours have that summertime magic and emphasise his character's carefree and bubbly personality. Funnily enough, while filming on location in Cuba, the costume designer, Mabolaji Dawodu, had to improvise as Cuban costumes held onto at least three bags of clothing intended to be worn as costumes in the film, meaning that replacements had to be sourced from Cuban natives themselves. For me, there are two standout costumes in Guava Island. One of them is the tie-dye set worn by Red, who is played by Nonso Anonzi. Although his character is quite sinister, it's still shown that he's a part of this colourful world and tie-dye is a timeless aesthetic, perfect for hitting up music festivals when they return. The second is the ornate blue gele wrap paired with the blue veil that Rihanna's character is wearing towards the end of the movie. The gele is a huge part of Nigerian culture and I remember the reactions on social media when she was revealed to be wearing it. Me and a lot of other Nigerians were happy to see it worn on a big scale and by one of the biggest musical artists in the world. A costume in a film can say a lot about a character's personality. And in musical biopic Get On Up, the late great Chadwick Boseman's portrayal of the legendary James Brown has a hell of a lot of that. All we need is a spark to keep the lamp down low till the sun rise up on us in the morning. Chadwick's outfits were custom made by costume designer Sharon Davies to illustrate Brown's journey from rags to riches, while also paying homage to some of the actual outfits he wore when performing live, which had to be on point because the film integrated real concert footage. While some of the designs took creative liberties, they always captured the essence of the godfather of funk and soul. From the massive quiffs to the super flamboyant and boldly coloured suits and shirts, they authentically portray a man who wants to be seen as well as heard. And yeah, I am the show. But if I'm spending my own money on the show, I'm gonna be the business too. Of all the outfits in the film, the one that I was feeling the most was James's fur coat and cowboy hat ensemble. Ta -da! It matches the flex of the moment, where he's got in his own private jet with his name on it. And personally, I've always wanted to hit up a party in a fur coat. Who knows? Maybe I'll pull up to a function in one in the near future, if I can actually pull it off. My next pick is plucked from the same era and has to be one of my favourite films that I've watched recently. Regina King's directorial debut, One Night in Miami, follows Malcolm X, Cassius Clay, Jim Brown and Sam Cooke on the night that Cassius Clay becomes the heavyweight champion of the world. Costume designer Francine Jameson Tanchuk, best known for White Men Can't Jump and Glory, was tasked with dressing not one but four icons from the 1960s, each with their own individual personalities, beliefs and sense of style. Soul singer Sam Cooke, for example, could afford to be a bit more extra, whereas Malcolm X kept things a bit tamer, in line with his desire to be taken seriously. There is no more room for anyone to be standing on the fence anymore. Personally, I'm a big fan of the retro boxing gear in the opening sequence. I love how ridiculously big the boxing gloves are. I can't imagine fighters in a modern day boxing match swinging it out with these giant red inflatable balloons on their hands. But as well as being comical to see, it goes to show how precise and detailed the look of One Night in Miami is. <laughs> Moving into the 80s, one of my favourite eras for music and culture, Coming to America saw a blend of cheesy 80s style and high African fashion. I feel like a complete idiot. This was one of the first times Hollywood had displayed representation of African fashion on a grander scale in a big budget film. Costume designer Deborah Nadelman Landis, who was Oscar nominated for her elaborate creations, took references from Kenya, Senegal, the Gambia, and East Africa, merging them with pieces that you'd find in Ghana and Nigeria to create something entirely specific to the fictional nation of Zamunda. And there's even more of these vibrant clothes with their patterns, prints, and spectrum of colors in the sequel coming to America, as it takes place mostly in Zamunda. 
In some of the early palace scenes in the original film, I noticed these African influences. And as a Nigerian, it was cool to see some of the clothes that me or my family would wear traditionally being rocked on screen by certain characters. But my favorite outfit from coming to America has to be the McDowell's work uniform. I love how it looks reminiscent of Scottish tartan, but even has a bootlegged McDonald's M. It's the perfect accessory to one of the funniest scenes in the film. When you think of garbage, think of Akeem. Finally, to zip things up, I want to talk about Melina Matsukas' big screen debut, Queen and Slim, featuring Daniel Kaluuya and Jodie Turner-Smith, whose chemistry is sizzling. The cinematography in this film is also fantastic, but that should be no surprise as Matsuka's got her break directing music videos for some of the biggest artists on the planet. On top of that, the outfits are bold and unique, thanks to the vision of costume designer Shiona Torini. Drawing inspiration from black exploitation heroines of the 70s and southern hip hop sensibilities, every look is as sleek as it is iconic. There's a tie for which is my favorite, but one of them has to be Slim's plum velour tracksuit. The look, the shine, it's almost royal. Then there's Uncle Earl's mustard yellow and checkered custom tracksuit made by artist Dapper Dan in collaboration with Gucci. I'm not a fan of designer clothing at all, but this has to be the first time I've seen casual wear that uniquely designed in a film in quite some time. <laughs> now, that's all from me. Thanks for listening to my favourite fits from my favourite flicks. Which films do you turn to for fashion inspo? Comment below and hit subscribe for more recommendations of what to watch on Prime Video.